Hello, welcome to the Exhausted Programmer. My name is Alexander, and today we are talking about AUK. AUK was introduced in 1977 to fill in some of the gaps of the processing pipelines of the time. It could be used for searching, it could be used for filtering. In fact, there's this whole scripting language attached to AUK. Its focus is mostly on data and pipelines and files where you have file separators and tokens. I think today is a useful tool for helping finding problems very quickly in large amounts of data or in the pipelines of, of processes. It is also very useful to learn these days because AUK is just about everywhere. Since it is so old, its footprint is very small and its dependencies, that is what depends on it, is very high. And so you can find it in many things, including busy box distros on containers out there in the cloud. To demonstrate what AUK does, first let's introduce another command, ps. Uh, we give it the E and F flags, E for every process, and F has to do with the full format that is printed out. We don't need to worry about what it's giving us other than to notice that there seems to be columns of data given to us. The columns are separated by spaces, which is what AUK will look at in order to differentiate different columns. We could pipe this into AUK and give it a command. This command will be print, and as it gets each line, it will just print each line. What's the point of doing this is, well, maybe not very helpful for the PS command, but maybe to print out a file, you could have it print every line. Again, there might be better ways of doing this, but this just shows off the formatting of awk. Awk will do this command for each line. And the print command is actually a pretty common one because oftentimes when the data comes in, we just want to look at specific columns and not everything. With that in mind, we can give it these dollar signs and numbers and it will only print those columns. Worth noting, one does represent the first column. It indexes starting at one. Dollar sign zero represents the entire line, something that we'll use later, and one will be the first line and so forth. Also worth pointing out is that this is a column not because it looks like a column, but because there's white space after it. So we go ahead and print this and we'll see that like the last line, we got the first column the fifth column, which is the time, and then the eighth column, which is the program that is running. It didn't give us what came after it because to awk, that is a whole new column. The blank space between awk and the print means that awk sees it as two separate columns. Also to be a little bit thorough, at least with what I'm putting on screen, the commas are useful because it gives us these spaces. If we take out the commas, then we won't have the spaces. Going forward, we'll keep things separated out, but you know, in case you needed to know how to have them printed without any spaces, there's how. We can also add strings into the middle of the print command. In this case, we can add the string running with spaces on each side for readability. And now we see that it'll print the first column, then the space running space, then five, and then two spaces, and then the command. Um, the reason for this is just to show you can put in whatever number of spaces you want. And without the commas, it doesn't add in extra spaces. You can do other things like putting in uh, slash T for a tab command. This will then make this next column after the, the one start either here or eight spaces later if the first column is too wide. Just pretty basic formatting stuff. You can also use awk with files if we take the PS output and put it into test.txt. Uh, we can run the same command on it or similar commands just by giving the file as another argument into awk, awk. And there we go. The second column being the process IDs and it only printed that column. It is worth thinking about how awk is doing this is that it takes in a line and it runs the command on that line. Uh, we can do more stuff as a scripting language. We can actually tell awk to do something before it reads any lines and then tell it to do something else when it is done reading line. In this command, we'll first print column one, column two, column three with tabs in between. Then we'll print the, all the lines. And then once it's all done printing, it will print done. And that's what we see, column one, column two, column three. Of course, it might not seem useful since there's already column names, but just as an example. And then there's the done print at the end. If you're working with files that are separated not by white space, but say commas, that way you can have white spaces in your columns. Uh, you can change the field separator in a couple of ways. One is with this capital F flag, and the next thing will be the file separator. And in this case, we'll print all the way up to the first colon because to awk, since we said the columns are separated by the colons, this is all one column. Since there was no colons up here, it printed the whole line because it never hit a second column. And then the rest, it just went up to that time. You can do it a slightly different way with um, setting the variable FS 
Awk does have some variables. We'll take a look at how to see what the variables are before you run anything, or if you're running it with a program file that we'll look at also later, you can get that as well. But it does the same thing. It just sets the separator, the field separator as a colon, and then it prints again the first column. The reason for looking at this in different ways that it works is that there's actually different versions of awk. I'm actually using GNU awk. There's a, a different version of awk for macOS systems. And if you look on Wikipedia, there seems to be a lot more listed. You might need to look at a man page to get some of these commands working for your system specifically. But if you're running Ubuntu, or I'm guessing just any Debian distro, uh, this should work as expected. Also, awk uses these sort of said grep command styles. Uh, we can run this here and what it's going to do is output obviously ps pipe it into awk and then it's going to try to search for any line that contains the letters tty together like this and it'll print that entire line and here we see that we have tty here tty here and here because it's printing out the process that we are running and those are the three lines that contain tty we can combine what we've done so far and even more into program files uh usually finish with a dot awk file extension if we just show the one i have pre-written again it will do the beginning command line which will be to just print those columns search for the tty print out those three columns associated with each line the second third and seventh one of each line and then print done and to run it we can run it like this which there we go column one two and three and there we go the reason why there's not this third one down here is because it is not running at the time that the PS is being passed in. Similarly, we can run it like this. Um, it does the same thing because it just does the same thing, but it's just a different way of doing it. You can run it on the test.txt that we created earlier. You can do other things like create variables and manipulate them. In this case, what we're going to do is run the PS, pipe it in. Awk will try to find every line with uh, TTY and then it'll increment the variable C. This is where you may or may not like awk uh, because we do not initialize C ourselves. We do not set the original value of C ourselves. It just assumes since it's new that it should start at zero. And at the end, it will print the total match, which would be C, whatever value of C would be based on how many matches we found. We found three matches, one, two, three, and that is our total matches. The truth is, is there's a lot that awk can do and we can't look at it all, but something else that might be useful or at least let you have an idea of what to look for if you're thinking alt can be useful for you is you can do things like searching based on the length dollar sign zero as i mentioned before is the whole line if the length of the whole line is less than 100 it will print it out if you don't give it a command to do it will just sort of default to print because that again just seems to be the most default reason to use awk and remember if you pipe awk into something else the print will print uh pipe it into whatever else is running afterwards but here we go uh we see that we're actually missing some of the commands from before because they were so long they wrapped around this cut off any line that was more than 100 characters long we've talked in previous videos about things like regex regex works as expected here we can have it print every line that starts with the uh, word root so all these that are ran by user root uh, the caret means that it will only start at the beginning of the line if root is in the uh, back half of it, it won't find it. And we can negate that match by putting in this exclamation mark right here. So every line that does not begin with root will print. And here we see where root is in the line, but not at the beginning. And therefore this did not match the root at the beginning of the line. Other regex things like the period or dot for any character, question marks, asterisks, plus these things work as expected. Uh, if you don't know how all that works, maybe I need to do a video on regex, but um, you know, you can also just look up man pages for it. There's man pages for regex. Finally, it's worth pointing out that awk does have some variables that are presets. You can have awk dump those out into a file by running this command. Uh, we're not giving it any command to run, so we're not initializing any variables. If we did, it would add those to the output. When you run this, the output is awkvars.out, so we can just cat that out. And see, these are the ones that are created by awk when we don't even do anything, including the field separator as just a space and some of these other things that we can be using. You can also define the file you want to dump the variables into. If for some reason you need that to be in a specific file, maybe you're trying to see what a variable is set when you're done running. I don't know, but you can specify the file name this way. Again, we're not running any awk commands itself, so nothing else is being added in. And then if we cat out my awk files, we'd get the same thing. 
As I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm still trying to get a grasp on how long these videos are as I'm making them, but I'm pretty sure that this one is going to be on the shorter side. And by that, I mean a lot closer to 10 minutes than 30 minutes. Hopefully in this, you've learned something you can use awk to do. There's actually a lot of places where this can be very helpful, but it's hard to get into every specific case. You can count the number of characters per line. You can again, have it just do basically any Turing complete thing with its scripting language, although it's not going to be as fast as some other executions of those same commands. Um, just try it out, see what it can be useful for you, especially if you're doing a lot of stuff at the system level. There's a reason why I'm using PS for my output because it uses spaces as a field separator and awk expects spaces as a field separator. It's like these were designed to be used together. And sure enough, they kind of were. They're in the same kind of classification. If you have any questions about this, I will do my best to answer them. I do admit that I don't use awk that often, but I will do the research if necessary. And if you have any questions about any other topics, you can drop them here or any other videos I have on this channel. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.